Good morning everybody and welcome to my talk about green routing, CO2 transparency and optimization on interdomain path enabled by the Scion Next Generation Internet Architecture. This work is in collaboration with my colleague Simon Chagall. First, we look into the essence of CO2 awareness. In the past decade, there has been an increasing pressure on corporations to disclose and reduce their carbon footprint. This pressure is not only from governments by enforcing strict environmental regulations such as carbon tax, but also from the financial sector. As an example, BlackRock has recently committed to net zero carbon emissions by 2050 by ensuring the companies they invest in disclose their carbon footprint and plan to reduce it. However, the ICT sector, representative of around 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions, lacks an effective tool to monitor and thereby optimize the carbon emissions of data transmissions over the public internet. This is mainly because interdomain paths in the current internet are selected by ISPs. Thus, endpoints have no control over the path they send their traffic on. Therefore, the current internet provides no means of carbon transparency. In contrast, Scion provides the foundations of CO2 aware interdomain communications by enabling endpoints to select their traffic's forwarding path and providing them with multiple fine-grained paths in the granularity of inter-AS interfaces. This unique feature can be used to provide endpoints with information about the carbon intensity of each interdomain path and thereby enable them to monitor the carbon footprint of their interdomain communications and optimize it through selecting the greenest path. As an example, in this figure, endpoints in ASs 1 and 3 can select path P2 to reach the other AS and reduce their carbon footprint through sending their traffic over a path powered by renewable energy resources. To achieve this goal in Scion, we need to design a system capable of estimating carbon intensity of interdomain path, disseminating this information to all ASs and endpoints in the network, and selecting the greenest path and monitoring carbon footprint of communications using this information. To estimate the average and instant carbon intensity of interdomain path, we design a distributed system that computes their carbon intensities as the sum of carbon intensities of all intradomain path segments they consist of. In each AS, the system computes the average carbon intensity of intradomain path between any border router pairs of the AS using the distance between them, the whole carbon emission of the AS, and the amount of traffic transited between them in a time interval. The system also monitors the instant carbon intensity of these paths using the instant electricity mix, energy efficiency, and traffic load of every device on the path between each border router pair. We designed two mechanisms to disseminate information about the carbon intensity of interdomain path, a beaconing-based mechanism and a path service-based mechanism. The beaconing-based mechanism is designed to disseminate the average carbon intensity of interdomain path during beaconing. In this mechanism, the beacon service of an AS encodes the average carbon intensity of intradomain path between its border router pairs into the path construction beacons or PCBs and propagates them to its neighboring ASs. The path service based mechanism, on the other hand, is designed to disseminate the instant carbon intensity of interdomain path. In this mechanism, an endpoint sending traffic on a path requests its hosting ASs path service for the instant carbon intensity of the path. Each path service on the path then adds the instant carbon intensity of the intradomain path segment in its own AS and forwards the request to the next path service on the path. Finally, the path service in the destination AS returns the instant carbon intensity of the path to the requesting endpoint. 
An endpoint selects the greenest path to a destination in two steps. First, it selects a set of paths with the lowest average carbon intensities. Then, it selects the one with the lowest instant carbon intensity by requesting the instant carbon intensities of all selected paths in the first step. To monitor the carbon footprint of its interdomain communications, an endpoint periodically requests the instant carbon intensity of the path it uses to send traffic on and multiply it by the amount of traffic it has sent since the previous period. With the ability to select greener path, it is expected that the environmentally conscientious users configure their endpoints to select such path. Therefore, brown ISPs would lose a portion of the traffic they use to transit and greener ISPs would receive more traffic. As the business model of ISPs has low profit margin and high aesthetic and low variable costs, a reduce in the transited traffic can reduce their profits significantly or even make their business unprofitable. Hence, this traffic shift would set in motion a virtuous cycle through which all ISPs would try to reduce their emissions to attract more traffic. As an example in this figure, traditionally, all traffic from AS1 to AS4 goes through AS2, but with the green path selection in place, a portion of traffic would go through AS3, which is greener. To win back its traffic, AS2 would increase its use of renewable energy resources and AS3 would lose the gained traffic. This time, AS3 increases its use of renewable energy resources to win back the traffic. The whole procedure would finally result in a greener internet. Now we look into the amount of emission that the green path selection could save. According to our simulations on a large-scale interdomain topology consisting of 2000 ASs including all large tier 1 and tier 2 ASs, selecting the greenest path, regardless of the green competition between ASs, could reduce the carbon footprint of interdomain communications between 90% of AS pairs. This reduction is at least 50% for half of the AS pairs equivalent to 400 grams of CO2 per terabyte. However, the resulting CO2 emission reductions from green competition between ISPs is even more promising. According to our simulations of ISPs behavior in the presence of green path selection based on their business model, we estimate that green path selection can reduce the total CO2 emission by large ISPs by 20%, which is illustrated in the figure on the left. Furthermore, the simulation results demonstrates an increasing correlation between greenness of an ISP and its profit, illustrated in the figure on the right, which confirms the virtuous cycle between ISPs. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. In this work, we have developed the first internet-wide carbon footprint monitoring system which also enables endpoints to select the greenest communication path. Furthermore, we showed that such a system could set in motion a virtuous cycle between ISPs to become greener, which could save 20% of ISPs' emissions. Thank you very much for your attention.